In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint this cute watercolor bookstore in Procreate step by step. Please download all tutorial files under the video. And now, if you are ready, let's grab our pencils and get started. I've gone ahead and created a canvas with a side set to 2000 by 2500 pixels. To make the drawing process easier, I've made a few brushes that you can download along with the color palette in the video description below. These files are free just as always. If you like my free stuff and want to get access to premium content on Patreon, you can find the link to it below the video as well. Free 7 days trial is still available. If you follow my tutorials and share your work on Instagram, don't forget to tag me in your post. I'll be very happy to see it. Now without further ado, let's proceed to drawing. We will start with a rough sketch, then create clean outlines, add colors and shading in the end. For the first sketch, I want to use ink bleed brush from Procreate ink in section. And it can be any dark color. Let's say red. The brush size is set to 7%. Let's draw a horizontal line for the roof. I will sketch it like this first. Then add a short vertical line. And another one on the right. Draw another horizontal line. To connect these two. Let me make this one a bit thicker, so you can see it better. And then it'll go down more. With two more lines. Let's also connect them. This way. And then I will make a line with an angle. On the opposite side too. We also need to connect them. With another horizontal line. And at the bottom of the shape, we can add these arcs. Going to the right. I will try to make them similar size. But they don't have to be perfect at all. A few more here. A couple more. And the last one. Let me find the center. And draw lines like this. That will go up. Let's try to keep the perspective. So I will switch from one side to another. Let me draw a line here and the last one on the left. Now it is ready. Let's draw the wall. It'll have a few parts. So here we can add this small one. Where we can put the name of the shop. It can have a frame. Here you can write your own name or something else. I will write art, books and prints in the middle of this rectangle. Also very simple. Like this. Alright. After we did that, we can continue drawing the wall going down. So we can add another small shape here. Draw in a horizontal line. I'm just connecting this. And here I will add a few more rectangles. If you like, you can place some more text inside it. Or keep it empty. I 
I will draw another small rectangle on the right and on the left as well. Let's continue going down from here by adding another small shape. This time it'll go this way, with a different angle. We also need to connect it on the sides, like this. Now we can draw more vertical lines, going more down. I will just continue this line and go all the way down to the ground. Do the same here. So we will get these two columns. Let's divide them into two halves. We can make this part a bit wider. Also this one on the left. But I will try to keep them on the same level. Just need to go down. And now we can determine the floor. This way. Now that we have the base shape, we can add some wooden texture on top of the building. Just simple vertical lines for now. Here we can put a paper with the working hours or something like this. Let it be 9 am till 6 pm. And in order not to keep the left side empty, we can put a lantern here. I will make it this way. Also very simple. Just connecting it at the bottom. And in another small shape. And it is done. Let me draw the door. It will take approximately half of the wall. So I'm adding two vertical lines first. And connecting them on top. Like this. We can draw the glass inside the door. Like this. Let me outline it more. And then I'll add the handle. In the lower part we can draw another rectangle. Like this. And another smaller one. Just to make it more interesting. And after the door, we can draw the window on the left, on the same height. So it'll go down here, let's make it big enough, so we can add books later. First I will outline the frame like this, inside the window. And now we can add a few shelves. The first one will go horizontal. Here I will sketch the books. Of different height. Some of them can go with an angle like this. And others will go straight. We 
can change the angle here. And then I'll add a few more. Changing the height. Like this. Now we can add a vertical line. So we can place more books. It will go up and to the right. And inside this shelf, we can place more books. That will be laying. We can also make them different. With different angles and lengths. Some of them can be bigger. Another one. And in the end we can add a book that will be standing. Like this. Alright. We have this empty place here. So we can sketch a plant. In a pot. It can go this way. Then I will add the stem. And some simple shape. That we will color later. Like this. And in the corner. We can put another paper with a sail. Adding smaller shapes here in the corners. And now it is also done. Let's put something inside the door too. The shop will be open. So I will draw a rectangle with an angle and write open. Ok. Now the building is ready. We can add a few more things at the bottom. For example, a few plants. Let me draw a big pot here. It can be round. But also very simple. We need to connect it. Add in a couple of details inside it. And then we can sketch the plant inside the pot. It will have a few leaves. A few smaller ones. And some of them can be big. Going down like this. Let me add another smaller one. And then go to the left. Let me fix this one. I will change its shape a little bit. Just move it a bit to the left. Ok, now it is better. Let me also fix this one. Now I think it is fine. Let me outline it a bit. And this one is ready. We can add another frame here under the window. Just another rectangle. 
c'est mes de dehors. And on the right side from the building, I will sketch a simple bush. Just determine the shape. It can go more to the right, a little bit down, like this. It is enough. And next to this plant, I will add one more, but in a different type of pot. I will just make it wider, but not very high. And also show the plant schematically. Same as we did with the bush. So we will use a specific brush to paint it later. Something like this. I think we can add something on the roof too. But before doing it, we can sketch a few stones on the ground. With these simple ovals. I will move to the right side. Draw a few more here. Another one. And also add them under the bush. Now let's add some foliage on top of the roof. On the right side of it. It may go down here. Just sketching tiny leaves. Here we will also use foliage brush. And I will add a shape on the left. Somewhere here. It may go upper. And now it is done. I will just add a few details on the door here. And that's it. We can also determine the bricks here. On the columns. Show them schematically like this. With vertical and horizontal lines. The first sketch is ready. Now that we have this rough sketch, let's create the outlines. To do that we need to add another layer on top of this one. And then lower the opacity of the sketch. I will set it to 27%. Let's now select color 16 from the palette. Go to calligraphy. And pick brush pen. It combines very well with watercolor. It is very pressure sensitive. And it has this bleed in the settings. So it'll work just great. We need to set the size to around 3% and outline everything, excluding the intersections. I will start from top of the roof again and change the pressure while creating the outlines.
Let's connect this line. And then I will just outline everything. Without using quick shape tool. So it looks more organic. I will keep outlining it, adding some smaller details and hatching. You can pause the video and do it on your own. And I'll see you in the next part. Now when the outlines are ready, we can remove the sketch below. Go to the layer with the outlines and set the layers mode to multiply. Now we will be doing this. Creating new layers under the outlines and applying the colors. So let's do it. I will create the first layer and select color number 1. Let's now go to inking and select dry ink. Let me adjust the size a little bit. Can be set to around 9 or 8 percent. And I will put it here, on top of the roof. Like this. This brush has a subtle texture, so it's better to paint it by hand. Let's now add another layer under this one and select color number 2. Let me first outline it around the edges. This way. Then I will make the size bigger and paint it faster. Like this. For this layer, let's create it here. And we will need two colors. Let's start with color number 5. I will draw the first part. Let me lower the size a little bit. And I will outline it together with this small part. Then just paint it. Let's skip this one. And go on the next. I will continue doing the same moving to the right. This one. Then another one. Continue moving to the right. Let's paint this one. And the last one with this color. And for the light parts, let me add another layer under this one. Select color number 3. We can just paint it faster. Need to increase the size. And we can make bigger strokes like this. Because this layer is below. I will just be careful here. And then paint these arcs. The last one. And now that we have the shapes, we can add the shadows. To do that easily, we can apply alpha lock on the layer. 
then select color number 4. And just paint on the small parts. Due to the alpha lock, the color will stay inside. I normally use alpha lock when I'm not going to change the layers mode or opacity. So that's way it is easier. Now let's do the same on the layer with the green color. I'm locking it. And selecting color number 6. We just need to do the same. Also move to the right side. And it is now ready. Let's merge these two layers. Now we can create another one under it to paint this rectangle. For that I will select color number 7. Let me outline it on the edges first. This way. Go into the right as always. Then I will go upper. Now we can increase the size. And just paint it quickly. Like this. Keep the subtle texture inside. Here we will put the shadows later. Let's continue going down. So I will add another layer under this one. And for this part, we can use color 8. Let me also lower the size first. I will draw this way. Then go up again. And finish it on top. We can now make the size bigger. And paint the entire area. Still keeping it textured. Alright. And for the small part. I will create one more layer. Since it is in shadow, we need to make it rather dark. So let's use color 9. I will just make the size slightly smaller. And draw like this. Let me make another horizontal line. Connect it. And finish painting. Like this. We can now continue going down. And add one more layer, right under the previous one. Let's paint these parts on the sides. So I will pick color 11 and draw these two rectangles on both sides. Also this one. And after this two, we can paint these two parts with the bricks. I will also create another layer for it. So later we can apply bricks texture. As the base color for it, let me use color 13. We can also first outline it. Just this way.
and then paint it with the bigger size. Do the same on the left. The color may intersect with the outlines. It is totally fine. Alright, now that we have these shapes, let's paint this big area behind the door. We will also need a new layer for it. So let's go ahead and create it right here. This time I will switch to color 12 and apply the color around the door. If it goes a little inside the door it is fine, because we will create a layer above to paint the door. Same goes to the window. I will just paint it this way. Then under the window. And all this area. So let's now add a layer above this one to draw the window and the door. They both will have color number one. So I will select it and first outline the window frame. I think we can make the size a bit smaller. And draw inside the lines. I will go down. Then paint this part. And using the same color, we can also draw the shelves inside the window. Let me make the size even smaller. I will go down this way. And then draw horizontally. Now it is ready. I think for the door we can create another layer, so we don't have to outline it for shading. We can put it somewhere here and just paint it all. So we can also first outline it. on all sides. On the right one. At the bottom. Then make the size bigger. And paint it all. I think this texture looks very nice. Not too flat. Let me finish it at the bottom. And for the glass I will create another layer. Let me do it here above this one. And then I will select color 20 for the glass. Draw inside this frame. Let me also outline it first. Connect at the bottom. And 
treat it as well. Here I added the small details in the outlines, just to make it more cute. Alright, now after this layer, let's work on the window. We need to create a layer under the window frame. It can be located above the previous one. I will just increase the size and paint it all. Very fast. Now we can also draw the books using different colors. Let me create a new layer for the books. I will be just picking different colors from the palette and painting them. Starting with color 8. We can paint a few books at a time. Just not the ones who stay next to each other. It would be better if they are different. Let's also paint a few horizontal ones. Now I will change the color. Let's say to number 7. And paint a few more books. Let me now select color 17. I will paint a few more from vertical row. And also horizontal. Switch into color 23. Let me draw this diagonal book, then this big horizontal one, now go into color 5. We can also try to pick the colors right from the drawing. So I will paint a book here. Then this one. And a small vertical book. Let me select color 15 now. And paint these two. We can also grab some light color, let's say 13. I will paint this one. Now we can pick the color from the window frame. Go to the color disk. And move the picker a bit down and to the right. To get this dark red color. I will paint this book on top. Then this big one. And two more here. This one in the corner. Alright, I think now all the books are ready. Let's work on this plant. We can also add a layer for it. And first I will paint the pot with color 23. We will shade it later. So now we can draw the plant. Let me add a layer under the pot. And select color 9 for the stem. And 
and for the foliage, I will select color number 15. I think we can add a layer for it. So later we can keep the stem and shade only the foliage. So let me now paint it quickly. And it's okay. Now I think we can paint the lantern. I will grab color number 8 for it. Add one more layer. It is already 20th layer. But later we will merge them. So the number will go down. We need to drag it upper, above these parts. So now it will be visible. I will finish painting it. The top side. And for the inner part, we can use color 20. Let's try to paint on the same layer. Like this. After the lantern, let's paint these plants at the bottom. So we can add a layer on top of this one. And start with the plant. Let's use color 14. And just apply the color inside the outlines. Let's paint these big leaves. This one on the left. And after we did that, we can also paint the pot. Let's do it on another layer below. As the base color, we can use color 17. And just paint it all. Like this. It also has a few details inside. You can add them while drawing the outlines. I will fill it like this. The last part. And when this one is ready, all we need to do is paint the remaining foliage. And also this pot. Here we can use color number 2. Let me also add another layer for it. Can be located below this one. I will just paint the pot. And for the foliage, we can use a different brush. First we need to create a new layer. Then go to the brush set for the bookstore. And grab this foliage brush. Let me select 14th color. We need to lower the size. It can be set to around 5 or 4 percent. And I will just be tapping. Like this. It doesn't have to match with the outlines 100 percent. Just create an abstract shape like this. Right after we did that, we can paint this bush on the right, using the same brush. We can stay on the same layer, 
since these objects are located far away from each other. We just need to change the color. It will be number 15. I will set the size to 5% and also tap a few times inside the outlines. It may go a little outside the outlines, it's totally fine. Now after we did that, we can also add some foliage on top. Let's use this dark color number 10. This time we need to create a layer on top of all layers. Right under the outlines. Using the same foliage brush, let's paint here on top. Then it'll go down here on the roof and on this side. Let's also paint on the left by tapping. It will go a bit to the left side and slightly down. Like this. Now after we did that, let's not forget to paint this sign with the working hours. We can do it on the same lay with the lantern. Let's find it. And then select color 18. Here we need to switch to dry ink. And apply the color like this. I think we painted all the shapes. If we forgot something, we can do it later. Now we can work on the background. So let's create a layer under all layers, go back to the brush set for the bookstore and grab watercolor brush. Now we can select color number 3. Set the size to around 48% and start making strokes behind the building. I think we can make the size even bigger. And go slightly down. This texture is very soft. So it'll look like this. Like the sky. And after that, we can also paint the ground. Let's stay on the same layer. We need to change the color into number 21. Just make the size a bit smaller. And paint it like this. Go slightly down. On the bricks. Let's now select color 22. Lower the size even more and paint inside the bricks. One by one. You will get this nice greenish tone. Let's paint them all like this. Even small ones. Behind the pot. And to add some color variation, we 
you can switch to number 20. I will lower the size one more time and apply some highlights on the bricks. Just a little bit. I think we can try to go even lighter. Maybe even pick white. Just lower the opacity of the brush a little bit. And paint more. Mostly on top of the bricks. I think now it is enough. After we did that, we can finally apply watercolor texture on the entire drawing. Painted all the shapes one by one. I think we can start from top of the drawing and go down. So here we have this dark foliage. It is on layer 25. We can just alpha lock the layer. Select color 14 from the palette and go back to foliage brush. I will set the size to 6% and just tap a few times on top. Also on this shape. Let's put it mostly on the right side. And for one more highlight. Let's select color 15. Just tap a few more times. Like this. I will also put it here. And now this part is ready. Let's move down in the layers. Now we have this one. And to add the shadow. I will create a layer on top of it, clip it and set it to multiply mode. Let's select watercolor texture, make it full opacity and adjust the size. Let's pick this red color from the shape and apply it here at the bottom. few times. Right after we did that, we can go ahead and merge these two layers. Then go to the next one. It is this wooden part. We can also add a layer on top of it. And clip. Let me set it to multiply. And now we can shade it. We can also pick the color right from the shape and put it on top with a bigger brush size. We can make a horizontal stroke like this, lower the size and draw another line right under the red shape. Now I will pick green color from here, so we can add sort of reflection. Since this layer is in multiply mode, we can create a layer between these two, to get the color that is not so dark. I will increase the size again and make a subtle stroke like this, with very low pressure. Let's now tap and hold on the color to go back to the previous one. Also go back to the previous layer to add the shadow under the foliage on the right side. Just draw like this. We can add sort of triangle here. Now the shape is ready too. We can merge them and switch to the next one. 
it is the sleigh with the roof. Let me add a layer on top of it, clip it, and set it to multiply mode as well. As you see, I'm using the same technique. It is very easy. We can grab the color from here, the green one, make the size slightly bigger, and start drawing the shadow. Like this. It may go slightly diagonal, but then we need to add the shadow under the foliage. Like this. We can lower the size a little bit. And darken this part. After we did that, we can go ahead and merge these layers too. Proceed to the next one. Let me also add a layer above it. Then clip it again. And just do the same. I will pick the color from the shape. And add the shadow. We need to set it to multiply. So let's make a stroke on top this way, to add the shadow under the shapes, and also under the foliage. Let's also make a stroke on the left, and a small one at the bottom. Now we can try to select a darker tone, let it be this one. Let's try to use the same brush, but with a very low size. Just shade these outlines. Like this. So it will pop up a little. Let's keep the name for now. We will change its color later. I will just merge these two layers and move down on the next one. We can also create a layer here, clip and set to multiply. We need to pick the color from here. I will adjust the size and add the shadows inside these rectangles. Like this. Let's first make them dark. Just by painting inside. And right after that, I will lower the size. And make the strokes around the outlines. Inside the rectangles. Also this one. And now we also need to add the shadow on top of the shape by making a stroke here I think this one is also ready now we can definitely merge this to this and continue moving down here we have this dark green part I will repeat all the steps we can multiply in this dark color. This time we can apply it at the bottom, because it goes with an angle.
Just draw horizontally. So now this one is also ready. I'm going to merge these two layers. And see what we can draw next. Here in the list I have this plant. So I think we can shade it. Here I will just alpha lock the layer. And apply two colors here. One for the highlight and the other one for the shadow. Let's start with the highlight. For that I will select color 15. Make the size a bit smaller. And put it on the tips of the leaves. This one. Here in the middle. And also on this big one. If you make another stroke, the color will get even lighter. Now after the highlight, let's add the shadow using color 10. We can put it here. Also on this small one. And in the middle. It is enough here. Let's work on the pot. We can first alpha lock the layer. Pick color number 9. And shade it on top by adding this dark color. Then I will make the size bigger and put it on the left and a little bit at the bottom. After the shadow, we can also apply the highlight with color 25. Let's put it on the right side. And then select very light color number 3. I will make the size smaller. And add a couple of shapes on the left. Increase the size. And highlight the right side even more. This way. Now we also need to add the shadow that comes from the leaves. For that I will add another layer. Clip it. And set it to multiply mode. So we can get a darker color. We can select it right from here. Put one of the shadows here, then another one, right under the leaf. Then I will lower the size and draw these two lines. Let's also put another shadow this way. And now the pot is ready too. I will merge these two layers and switch to the next one. Here we have this foliage. Let me just alpha lock the layer and add a highlight here with color 15. We also need to switch to foliage brush. And tap a few times. Like this. And now for the shadow. I will grab color number 10. I'm using the same colors as we did with the previous plant. This time I will apply this color at the bottom. And it is ready. On the same layer, 
we hit this bush on the right. Let's also highlight it. Since we use this light color here, we need to pick the color that will be even lighter. It's this one, number 24. We can also tap a few times this way. And on this one, we can add a few berries. So I will select dark color from here, this red one, then go to inking and pick dry ink. We just need to draw tiny ovals here and there. A few more. And now it is done. Let's finish this pot. For this one I will add another layer. Clip it. And set to multiply. So we can grab this red color. Switch to watercolor brush. And apply it on the left. Also at the lower side. And on this small part. We also need to add the cast shadow. So I will lower the size. And draw under the leaves. Like this. We can darken this side even more. And go a bit to the right. Now it is done. Let's merge these two layers. And I think we can go ahead and merge some more. For example, these two. Also this plant with the pot. And after we did that, we can work on the lantern. We have it here on this layer. So let me try to alpha lock it first. And pick color number 12. I'll add a subtle shadow here on the left. Let's consider this one ready. And move to the next layer. We heal this part of the wall. So let's first alpha lock it and apply the shadow. We can use color number 9 here. Let me increase the size a little bit and start drawing the shadow under this dark green part. It may go as a line here and then a little down on the left. Same here. I will just make a couple of more strokes to darken it. So this line is more distinct. And now we can add the shadows from the sign and from the lantern. I will just draw around it. Like this. Now let me lower the size. And draw these two lines. On the left side and at the bottom. I think we can just make another stroke. Like this. Let's move down. To this yellowish part. We can also alpha lock it. 
and instead of drawing all the bricks one by one, we can apply the pattern with just one stroke. Especially for this I made a watercolor bricks brush. So let's select it and pick color number 2. The size doesn't matter here a lot, because it is in texturized mode. We just make strokes like this. And now after we did that, we also need to add the shadow. To do that I will create a layer above this one. Apply a clipping mask. And then set it to multiply. To get a darker tone. It will be number 12. Let's select soft water color brush again. Paint on top of the shape. And go down on the left. We can also add the shadow here from the bush. Then do the same on this one. Here the shadow comes from the plant. Let's paint at the bottom a little bit. And it is done. We can merge these two layers and do it together with all these three. Proceed to the window frame. Here we can select red color and add a delay with the clipping mask. To make it darker we need to set the layer mode to multiply. Let's darken it a little this way. Also on the left side. I will lower the size a little bit. And put it at the bottom of the frame. Like this. Let me make another stroke somewhere here. And also shade the shelf. We can put the color here, just a little bit. Also in this corner. And now it is done. Let's see what we have next. I'm gonna merge these two layers. And work on the pot. For the first shadow I will apply alpha lock on the layer. And pick color 26. Let's put the color this way on the left. Just paint approximately half of the pot. And after that, we can select color 22. And small highlights on the opposite side. Like this. And to add a darker shadow, I will create a layer with the clipping mask. Change the layers mode to multiply. And then tap and hold here to go back to the previous color. With the low brush size, we can start applying the shadow. It will go this way. Also under this line. And more on the left. Let 
Let's also paint at the bottom. And once it is ready, we can merge these layers too. Then work on the plant. Here we can just alpha lock the layer and also apply shadows and highlights. Let me start with the shadows. It will be color 27. We can shade some of the leaves. For example, this one. Also the small ones at the bottom. And a subtle stroke on this one. And right after that, we can add the highlight too, with color 24. I will just make the size even smaller. And draw these ovals. Inside the leaves. If you tap a few times, the color will get lighter. It is now ready. We only need to add the shadow on the stem. It has this dark green color, and to make it even darker, I will add delay with the clipping mask in multiply mode. Pick the base color from here, add the shadow under the plant, and a little bit on the left. Now let's merge these two layers and all the layers with the plant, including the pot. We can keep the books as they are and work on the window. Let me also alpha lock it, because I'm going to keep it in normal mode. For the shadow we can use color 28. Just increase the size and paint on top of the glass. It may go slightly diagonal. And now to make the sail pop up, let's recolor it into color 3. I will just lower the size and actually here we can select Gray ink. Just draw inside the rectangle. Window is now ready. Let's work on the door. We can also alpha lock this layer with the glass. And select color number 17. Let's switch to soft water color brush and apply it in a similar way. Just shade it on top slightly and a little bit on the left. Now we can lower the brush size and make another stroke for the shadow inside the glass. Now let's make this sign lighter. We can pick color 20. And paint it using dry ink. Just make a stroke inside it. After this step, we can work on the red part. Here we will need a new layer with a clipping mask. Hit multiply mode. Let me select the color from the door. Then watercolor brush. And darken the top part. I 
I will go down more on the left side. And put a shadow on the side. Then with a smaller size, we can add more shadows on this rectangle. I will just follow the sketch. Let me make another stroke here, under the glass. And it will be enough. I'm going to merge these two layers. And now we only need to paint the big wall. I will also add another layer above it. Clip. Set to multiply. And pick the base color. Let me first put the shadow here. On top of the side. And a little bit on the right. We can also shade the left side of it. Add a shadow from the plant. Then darken the lower side. And make a few strokes around the window. Like this. Then with a the smaller size, I will make a couple of strokes in this frame. I think we can add a darker shadow. So I will pick the color from here and draw horizontally. We will get this nice dark color. And after that the wall is ready. I will merge these two layers. And finally create a layer above this one. So we can add more shadows on the ground. We will apply two colors here. 29 and 30. Let's start with 29. We can just make strokes here on top of the shape. And go a little down. Also paint under the bush. It may go a little more to the left side. And after we did it, let's switch to color 30, that is slightly darker. So we can add one more shadow under the building. Let's make it a bit wider, then also under the bush, and on the left side from the pots. Also this one. Now when the drawing is ready, let me change a few colors on the text. For example, I want to change this one. It looks a bit too dark. If you remember, we have all the outlines here on one layer. And it is in multiply mode. So first we need to select it. I will be using freehand. I will just outline the text. Close the selection. Then swipe three fingers down and click cut and paste. It will appear on a new layer in normal mode. If you now alpha lock it, and select color 19, we can go back to this layer, and click fill layer. Then we will get the slight color. We can also do the same with the name. We also have it here on this layer, so I will try to outline it carefully, using freehand selection. 
I will start from the bottom. Go around it. And try to be very careful. Outline all the letters. Let's also close the selection and then cut and paste it. We can also alpha lock it and then fill it with the same color. Or we can try to use a lighter one, for example number 3. Maybe it will look better. Ok, now I think it is perfect. We just need to put it under the shadow. And to make it look like that, I will change the less mode to overlay. So the shadow will appear also on the lattice. In the end of the video, I want to apply a paper overlay, so it will look even more like watercolor drawing. To do that we can create a layer on top of all layers and set it to color burn. Let's select the Swarby Canvas texture and color 28. We just need to make a stroke all over the canvas with full size and opacity. So we will get this. And after this final step, our bookstore illustration is complete. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. For more tutorials and brush sets, check out my Patreon page. Free 7 days trial is still open. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.